Hey guys, so today we're going to be learning all about React Router version 4. I definitely recommend heading over to reacttraining.com and reading the documentation about React Router to fill in the gaps from what you learn here. So let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is use create react app to create our sample application. And we're going to be building the router on top of this. So now that that's finished, we want to change into that directory and we want to install our dependency, which is react router DOM. We can now start our application by running npm start. While that's starting, we're gonna go into my app and we're gonna remove some of the stuff that we just don't need. We're gonna remove app.css, app.test, index.css, index.svg, and then we want to remove the references to these files. So we can remove this, and inside app.js, we can remove these, and we just want to return a div. Cool. If we save and refresh, we can see that we're now just rendering my app, and we've got rid of all the stuff we don't need. So now we can get started with React Router. So the first thing we want to do is create a new folder inside SRC called routes. Inside this, we're gonna make a new file called routes.js. And we want to import this file into app.js. And we want to return that. As you can see, it'll show an error now because routes isn't a valid React component. So we can change that now by importing React from React and exporting default the anonymous function. And for now, we're just going to export a div. And we can see that we get rid of that error and we're now using this component. Next, we want to import some stuff from React Router. So we want to import browser router and we want to import route from React Router DOM. And we can now, instead of exporting a div, we're going to use browser router and close that up as well. And inside browser router, we're going to use the route component. And this component takes a few props, so we need to give it a path, which we're just going to put as forward slash, and it needs a component. And we don't have any components we can give it yet, so we're going to create one. So inside the routes folder, we're going to create another new file. And we're going to call it home.js. We're going to import React. And again, we're going to export default. And we're just going to export a div. It says this is the home. Close that div. And if we save that, we can now import this home into our routes file. So we're going to import home from home. We save that, refresh, and um, we now need to give this inside here. And we can see that we're now rendering that. So that's really cool, um, but we have an issue. If we go to any other path, we can see that we get this as well. And this is because we need to add in exact here. And this will mean that this will only be used if the exact path matches this. So now you can see we are rendering nothing for that path. But if we change it just to forward slash, then we get this. So what else can we do with this? Say we have a login screen. So we want to make a new file. And we're going to call it login.js. 
and inside this file I'm just going to copy home but we're going to say this is the login so now inside routes we want to give it another route and this route is going to be our login route so it's going to be forward slash login and we're going to give it the login component which we need to import we save uh, we can see we're now getting an error and this is because browser router is only supposed to have one child element but we're passing multiple routes into it so to solve this we're going to use something called switch which I think again is new off react router 4 and you can read more information about it here but basically we can wrap these routes inside a switch basically like a switch statement and fix our indentation and now this should work for us so we have the home but if we go to forward slash login then we get the login component so that's cool uh, let's bring this one step further and let's create a private component so we're going to call it private.js and again we're just going to copy this and we're going to say this is the private and inside our routes we can import this from private and we can set up another route it doesn't matter where it goes in this list but we'll just put it last forward slash private and we're going to make this a bit bigger so you guys can see um, if we refresh we can see that now we can go to forward slash login to bring us the login if we go to private it'll give us the private but we won't only want people to be able to access this route if they are logged in so to do that we're going to import something else from react router dom called redirect move the component prop and replace it with render and render takes a function we're going to provide it with an anonymous function and we're going to check the status of a variable called logged in which we're going to initialize as false so inside render we are going to give a ternary operator and we're going to check logged in and if we are logged in then we want to return just a private component but if we aren't logged in then we want to provide the redirect component which takes a prop called to and inside this we give it a path name where we want to redirect to so the path name we're going to give is login so if the user visits the private route then if they're not logged in we're going to redirect them to login if they are logged in we're going to show them the private component so here you can see we're at login and that works if we move to private we'll be redirected to login and this is exactly what we wanted if we change the state of logged into true and save and then try to visit private we can see that we're allowed to see the page this is really cool and this sort of functionality is really useful as i said i definitely recommend having a look at the documentation to see what other cool things you can do thanks for watching if you have any questions don't be afraid to ask and i'll see you next time